Well, I am uh, really pleased today to have a very special guest, Richard Laruena, who is the uh, brains behind uh, PUA Training, which is a long established and highly successful uh, uh, venture, which uh, has turned a lot of guys into successful uh, women uh, getters, I guess. <laughs> successful uh, women. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm quite thrilled to have Richard here. Uh, if people aren't familiar with it, I'm going to have Richard uh, familiar with him. I'm going to uh, have him give us a, uh, an introduction about himself, uh, some of the uh, experiences he's had, as well as um, you know a little bit of introduction to PUA Training, which is probably one of the premier uh, companies out there today that uh, uh, you know trains guys on on uh, becoming more successful with women. So Richard, tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, your story and, uh, and your company and everything. Sure. So my background is that when I, when I was young, I was very introverted and very shy. And I was depressed. I was bullied at school. So I was, I was in a bad situation, um, so much so that I, I think I had 80% attendance um, in my you know, in the last few years of school because I, I just hated going. It even affected my grades. And probably the most upsetting manifestation of, of my lack of social skills was um, my helplessness when it came to girls. So, of course, I didn't have any female friends. I didn't have, you know, a sister or anyone that I would even just talk to. So um, the idea of getting numbers and, and dates was many, many, many steps um, away from where I was and you know that situation just continued and it actually wasn't until around the time the game was coming out in 2005-06 that I realized that this was an area you could actually work on um, and once I figured that out I kind of jumped into it I uh, did everything I could um, long story short I, I got better and then I, I loved it so much, I wanted to teach other guys. And it, it really wasn't going to be a business. I wasn't thinking, you know, how I would grow it to, a, to be a business. But um, people liked my training and we became busier. I had to hire extra people. And, and that's kind of what happened. Okay. Well, um, you know, I, I think you're very modest about that. I think PUA training is a uh, is a worldwide uh, phenomenon. Um, you've, uh, I guess, been affiliated with a lot of the top instructors. Uh, I think what um, uh, um, you know, you've had like Kezia was. I don't know if she's still with you or not. And then you had uh, um, Adam Lang Adam Lyons with you, yeah. and uh, a lot of these guys uh, who've gone on to. Uh, major fame in the world uh you know i've been with you i don't know if they're still with you frankly but um uh, or or what uh, how you work with them today but meanwhile uh you know that there's been a lot of uh success associated with pua training and i believe you also uh, acquired um uh with something the uh, uh the fast seduction website uh which uh, used to be uh the sort of linchpin of the whole community and uh yep. So you've you've really done a lot in your time. Um, I guess I, I let's go back to some of the comments you just made. I mean, you mentioned being shy and introverted. Uh, how would you deal with that today with somebody that uh, you know uh, comes to you for uh, training or uh, or or how to uh, to come come out of their own shells? I actually rarely meet guys as bad as I was. Um, you know what what I did for it. Well, first, for a long time, I didn't do anything. So from time to time, I'd be in a social situation or speaking in, uh, to a group, and I'd just go bright red and shut down or, or just sit there silently or whatever. So um, that, was, that was what I did for most of my life. When I actually decided to tackle it, uh, I did a, a course where I was teaching English to foreigners. I went to salsa classes. I forced myself to do some things that would... Um, lose that fear so if a guy comes to me I mean if he's if he's too terrified to approach it's possible to approach girls and 
bring them over. If he shuts down even in that situation, it's possible to talk to some of my female friends who are very beautiful and say, you know, have a practice date with this guy. And you just see, you know, over the course of an hour or something, you would loosen up, do it again, he starts off looser, he gets even looser. And then it's, you know, process of exposure, even practicing holding eye contact, walking down the roads, doing some things that are not specifically related to picking up women, you know, something like going to dance classes, um, doing some public speaking, whatever it would be. And then you just see that um, everything improves, his body language improves, maybe even, you know, fixing some elements, like if he's very badly dressed, then you put in it in, in nice clothes and women start to notice him. Um, just making a lot of very small adjustments that in the end make him feel like he's worth something, that he's not bothering every woman that he's trying to talk to um, and that maybe they wouldn't mind speaking to him. So just adding the steps, step by step, depending on how bad he is to start with. Well, what about, um, I guess then, uh, today I, I, I do think that in general, uh, I'm, what I'm seeing is that uh, guys have, uh, you know, while there's still certainly guys out there with uh, serious uh, problems uh, in their social skills and, and things like that, I'm finding that there's a lot more guys who are successful with women that are uh, uh, around, and I don't know if that's just um, a factor of this, the community being more well known, and that it's appealing to a wider range of people. But uh, we, um, you know, we, I, I would think back in the earlier days, I think we saw people who were who were more socially challenged than what we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. And I think today we're seeing uh, maybe more of a mix. But uh, I, I'd say that you're seeing probably more people with more social skills than. Than, uh, than we did previously. Yeah, I think um, back then it was quite a, a nerdy thing. It was only online and it was very, very closed. So it attracted a certain demographic and, and then it became broader. Well, I guess the, uh, what I would uh, be curious about then is uh, what are the main um, challenges that you see among the guys who come to you for training and uh, uh, and how do you mostly deal with them? Like, uh, you, I'm sure you get guys who have hang-ups about all sorts of different things. It's usually the same old stuff. Um, it's it's usually quite predictable. And it, you know, if you kind of run through how it would work in sequence, you know, terrified to even approach, so it doesn't do anything. Uh, approaches, but runs out of stuff to say. Gets into a conversation, but kind of doesn't go anywhere has nice interactions, but the girls don't see them as anything sexual. Um, goes on dates, but can't escalate, pull the trigger, and the girl loses interest. So it's, uh, I guess those are the main ones, and, and they just crop up time and time again. Well, what about um, sort of, uh, do, they, do you find that some of them come up, come to you with uh, certain sticking points, like, uh, uh, guys who are, you know, for example, they, they have some kind of a hang-up about their looks or they have a hang-up about um, perhaps uh, their age or per perhaps uh, their weight, uh, their height, you know, this, these type of things. Yeah, yeah, all the time. But that's, that's normally just one of their problems and they'd find that if they uh, fix the, the other ones that they, they're under control, you know, the, uh, in their power to fix, um, that the thing that they think is a problem wouldn't be a problem. So if a guy can come to me and say, I'm amazing at approaching, I have brilliant conversations, I'm excellent at being sexual and projecting a sexual energy, and then he still couldn't get girls, then you know maybe we'll look at that and consider whether that's really a problem. I mean, if there's something, uh, let's say, superficial you know, about his appearance that is, is definitely holding him back and we could change it, then and then it should be addressed. But I think every, every guy thinks that, you know, he's got something. Right. Um, I guess uh, the other thing that I, I'm very curious about in general is that, you know, you've been doing this quite a while now. Uh, have you, um, one, actually one of the things that I, before I get to that subject, uh, one of the things that I've, I, I remember noticing when I've read some of your materials, um, I find that there are some people have a gift for sort of self-correction. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that uh, you were uh, very good at, that you were able to 
go from where you were to you know to where you are or where you were uh, by uh, you know a, a sort of a, an ability which I don't think everybody necessarily has. Some people have to work at it a lot harder than other people. But from the way it, uh, you know the inform the material of yours that I've read, it seemed like you you uh, had a real gift for that for for making those corrections with yourself yeah I think so and something else that helped was I was very humble I didn't you know I didn't have an ego attached to who I was and I was willing to embrace change um, some some things happen by accident I, I didn't really at the time think that spending time with other people that are very good I didn't I didn't think that that would help me um, but it really did and I didn't do all of the uh, self-analysis myself I did have um, you know a cousin that was pointing out all my flaws at every opportunity I did um, write down you know after a night out all of the things that that went right and wrong and that that gave me some realization I, I was always taking the approach of um, you know if I if I get some feedback from a girl if things aren't quite right um, I take it as my fault I don't have any ego with that. And then I would analyze it and think, how could I have made that go differently? And usually, you know, usually you can come up with something. I was always as well open to, to try things. I, I know that we, uh, when we did boot camps, you know, I would say to a guy, go and, go and say this or go and try that. And he's, he'll say that won't work. So he had this kind of closed attitude, but I never had that. I would try anything. Um, and often the stuff that works is maybe, you know, the, the thing that wouldn't have been what you would have tried first. Um, because if you're doing everything, you know, if you're not getting the results, what do you know, right? So I was open to everything. Walk me through like uh, something that works in terms of, let's say, uh, you know, you, you had a, a student come to you and he's, um, let's call it a sort of an average sort of, uh, of what you would expect. What would you specifically have him do and talk and say, uh, and where would it be? And, and this, you know, like just something more specific about how you would uh, deal with a, a, his uh, his particular problems. Well, you don't. You're not giving him much of a profile, but um, we pick, would pick your average your average guy. I mean, most of them. I, I'm sure you, you mentioned that they all seem to have the same sort of problems in general. So. Uh, um, yeah, so we'd we'd give him some openers, I guess, if we have to. Um, you've got openers that will for a guy that really sucks. You can you can give him uh, the kind of opener that will get into a discussion with you know nine girls out of ten. You say that um, you know your your best friend is considering getting engaged, but he's only known the girl for a month he wants your advice he's planning to do it tomorrow you know what does she think and that can get into a nice discussion um, you know we can if the guy is more proficient then he can just you know have a a simple faster opener um, you know are you girls talking about me no well why not you know something like that and they laugh and if he's a bit you know smoother he, he should be able to after that uh, come up with something or at least introduce himself or whatever. Um, once we've got a guy that can get into conversations, it's about, you know, getting away from the opening topic, topic. So you don't ask the girl what she's drinking and then two minutes later you're still talking about cocktails and different drinks and different bars and that barman there and this new place that opened. You've transitioned to, to something, you know, you've introduced yourself, you've got their names. Um, then it's kind of the the basics of an interesting conversation, making sure that he's not fidgeting, that he's holding good eye, eye contact, that he's not asking question after question. Um, after that, it's stuff like you know, if it's in a bar or club and you want to take the girl home, you need to find out logistics. You know, do they live together? Um, do they have to wake up at six a.m. tomorrow for a flight? Um, do they have plans for later? Whatever it would be. If it's a different situation and you want to get a number, then you need to find the reason to ask for the number. So, you know, after talking for 10 minutes, you don't want to just say, okay, it was nice to speak to you. You know, what's the best way to keep in touch? That's okay. But it's much better if you find out that she loves painting 
and so you've got an introductory oil painting class and she should go to that that you mentioned that you do wall climbing and you know she's interested in that and you say okay cool we should go or just simply you know she likes cocktails or she likes sushi or whatever it is and you use that as the reason to to get the number so um, over the course of you know if you're working and I, I don't I really rarely do um, one-on-ones these days but um, when I when I work with a guy it will just be moving through those steps so that in his mind he's got the blueprint which is like open you know transition from that take it you know get to know them get personal don't ask too many questions keep it light and fun um, then uh, find the connections between you the commonalities uh, show her you know why you like her from from these things and then work towards the close and if you have a guy that is maybe unable to build attraction you know you can work on specific things uh, with that if you've got a guy that is not good at getting sexual you can work on specific things to do with that but you know the the average interaction will will look something like that Give us a little bit more detail on on how to create attraction, and alt, and also afterwards, uh, you know how how you maybe uh, transition to the more sexual. Um, creating attraction can be done many different ways. I know that um, you know back in the day it was all about the DHP stories and and the next. Um, it was never something that. I would teach guys. Um, I would uh, talk to them about teasing, and you know, I like push pull, um, but it it's something that really depends on the girl. And oftentimes, by being uh, confident, having good body language, having an interesting conversation, holding good eye contact, she, and increasing some, you know, introducing some sexual energy, which we'll talk about next. Um, it generates attraction so you don't need any specific gambits um, personally I think the way that I would cause a girl to get attracted who might not be just from you know the usual blind conversation would be uh, to mercilessly tease her in a funny way um, or to if the girl is super super tough and bitchy to be even a little bit aggressive and rude but with with a bit of a smirk um, you know swearing or something like that that just kind of shocks her and and breaks her out of that bitchiness um, but then you know m most of the time I, I would get by just by causing these little moments of, of sexual tension where she says something and I'm like okay just look at her, <laughs> pause, give her strong eye contact, have a little smirk. And then she just, you know, she blushes or she, you know, she shows in some way that she's, um, you know, she's felt that and her heart rate's increased. So the, uh, the, the uh, pregnant pause basically has a big effect, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think there are many, many ways to be sexual. The pregnant pause is a very, very simple one, and it's something that requires some, you know, strength on your part because, you know, the the kind of very shy guy is not going to be comfortable with silence and eye contact, you know. So, uh, to successfully seduce, I think it's very important to to be able to do that with any girl, um, no matter how pretty she is, because. It's, it's a very simple thing you don't you don't really need to use your brain uh, when she's talking you can just stare at her lips and and let a smile creep across her face and she's you know she feels again something you throw her off what she's saying and you're like go on carry on and then you keep doing it again and she's like stop that and you're like stop what I'm I'm listening you were telling me what about your cat yeah carry on like this so um, I like having an undercurrent of sexuality and then on the top uh, never to verbalize it you know so I wouldn't say oh you were telling me about your cat but I was just thinking about kissing you or something like that that would be for me very um, you know 
a very weak move. So um, having that bland conversation, bland in terms of the subject matter, and then just underneath it, you're you're introducing sexual tension in, in all kinds of interesting ways to, you know, she's got some dress or jeans or whatever it is, and you say, oh, what material is that? And you kind of touch it, and you're like, oh, it's so soft. And then you kind of <laughs> start touching it softly, and then you're looking at her, and you wait until the moment where she realizes that you're, you know, you're being sexual. I've, I've done it, um, you know, a thousand different ways, but it normally has that element where, uh, she's not sure exactly what's going on and then she realizes something sexual but it's funny and she laughs but she feels turned on and it's it's never happened I don't think that I've told a girl that I want to kiss her asked if I can kiss her said that she looks like she's imagining kissing me asked her what grade she would get in kissing school or any of the other um, you know verbal ways of, of escalating well, I think uh, you have a very laid back sort of um, demeanor and I would see that uh, women would find that uh, kind of intriguing. I think a lot of guys probably come across much too anxious and um, you know when they meet someone like yourself who's sort of you know uh, very calm about everything basically I think that that's probably very appealing um, and um, I guess uh, that's probably been uh, a little bit of a secret weapon, I would think. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, when I, in my early days, people were telling me that I needed to be very loud and high energy. There was all this stuff about high energy. And yeah, maybe, you know, if you're, if you're performing to an audience, but even then, you know, a lot of people command uh, respect and engage people without jumping around and you know speaking quickly and uh, with huge gestures and stuff you know more like a statesman than um, Tony Robbins or whatever so um, it's something that that works and I think that you know James Bond is an archetype and he'd never you know he's not high energy um, when he's speaking, he's high energy when he's jumping around shooting people, but when he's interacting with women, it's, it's smooth, you know, so it's, it's one archetype that works, and the thing is most of the guys in the community are introverts, so to tell them that they need to be a performer, um, it's a big step, to tell them that, you know, they're going to be this kind of uh, silent, deadly assassin is, you know, is a lot better, and I, I think what what helped me with that was actually going to a lot of places where um, girls didn't speak English when I'm when I'm traveling because I've been to I don't know 58 countries and also going to super super noisy nightclubs where you can't have any kind of conversation so it's all about um, you know your movements your eye contact your um, your demeanor and it 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 works to be that kind of smooth um, smooth guy versus you know the the super extrovert one. I can do that too, of course, but it's just not my it's not my natural type. So it takes more effort. Um, you know that that's an interesting side topic. Is um, sometimes uh, with women, the less said, the better. And a lot yeah. of times, uh, let them say it. Let them let them give you a compliment. Let them say they love you. Let them say they want to see you again. You know, the less said, the better, for sure. Make them say something. Wait for it. Right. Um, what I was getting to, though, is that um, uh, I think we, uh, you know, we've seen uh, a lot of times where uh, uh, guys will have some success with a woman in person, where they've really done almost nothing, and mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a function, I think, of their their personal confidence um, and experience. And um, maybe you could. Give us a little bit of insight into into that, because I, I believe that that's something that you're probably very good at. Yeah, I mean, what I what I like to do, I mean, the the things we've talked about so far, I think they're very separate from from what I do uh, when we're talking about you know students and the advice for a, a starting a guy that's starting out. Um, if I if I wanted to seduce a, an untouchable supermodel girl, 
then the best situation for me would be that she's introduced to me and then she's in the vicinity, meaning, you know, she's part of the group or she's in the adjacent group or whatever it is. And, you know, I would probably meet her and be disinterested. And even, you know, looking around as I shake her hand or whatever, not really paying attention. And then when I met her, meet her again later, I was like, what's your name? Claire, was it? And then she's like, no. You know? <laughs> so it would be it would be this kind of behavior. So it's not it's not working hard. And then that that intrigues her. Then uh, meantime, in front of her, she's seeing maybe that I'm looking, you know, noticing other girls. She's seeing that I'm interacting um, with, you know, with a female in a very friendly, you know, happy, positive way. That I, w I wasn't doing that with her. I was disinterested. So, you know, a lot of what I do is about um, letting letting people, women, be exposed to me, and then them just, you know, want, wanting me like that. Um, and then at the end of that night, I wouldn't even take her number. I'd get my female friend to do it. Um, to be even better. So, I mean, that's that's kind of you know the this kind of situation that I would engineer to to happen, um, and yeah, it relies on not doing very much and the idea that you're not doing very much, not because you you can't because you're useless, but because for some reason you're just not that interested. And then why aren't you that interested? <laughs> so that gets her chasing you, obviously. Yes, yeah, and then she's she's telling you you know something, and you're like, oh right, okay, you're not interested, and then she starts trying to impress you, and you're like, oh god, <laughs> you just, and then you tease her, and then you tell some lame joke, but she laughs a lot because she really likes you, and you tease her some more, and then she gives you a compliment, and you say, oh thanks, yeah, you don't give her one back. <laughs> And then maybe, if you want, you know, after 30 minutes, you, you ask her a question, she says something, and you say, really? You like that? Oh, I actually really like that. That's amazing. Wow. And, you know, you can give her a reward for something completely unrelated to her being a model, her looking like she does, or whatever it is. Okay. And... Um so that's sort of more or less how you will transition into getting into showing her some interest and then just sort of letting that increase slowly, uh, you know, while she kind of probably tries to drag more of it out of you. Yes. If, I mean, if it's a one-on-one -on -one interaction, that's how it would be. If it wasn't, um, the way that I've um, dated or slept with or whatever, you know, most of the girls in the past few years has just been to bring them into the the circle and then just have them hang out there and just become more and more attracted until the moment when I can see that it's just a, a sure thing and that by the time we get some one-on-one -on -one time they, they've been craving it um, the idea is that when you when you approach a girl cold and you need to do everything in that moment it's very hard to demonstrate your whole, whole personality and be more important to, to them than ev everything else that's going on in their life um, if you can bring them into the social circle somehow it's a lot easier and then from there you just let them hang out and see what's going on uh, have you know your friends tell them that you're a cool guy see see how you do things how you live and you know over time become very attracted that's that's pretty much what what I've done and it would have been very difficult in those situations to instead of doing that to try and get them you know that day and let's say there's three girls that you meet like let's say tomorrow you could go to some Victoria's Secret event and all, all of the Victoria's Secret girls are there what do you do do you leave with one girl and you think you don't you did well or do you leave with one number and think you did well um, the best result is actually to get the connections with there's a bunch of them and bring them out and they're with their friends and then you're in the network and over the next year end up dating all of them so it's kind of like that old thing you know give the give the guy a, a fish and he can eat one so give him a net <laughs> and he gets to eat you know every day or whatever and that's that's been my philosophy especially since 
you know, now I'm 36, and in the past few years, I haven't really wanted to go out to bars and clubs every day or to trudge around the streets, you know, in the daytime doing day games. So it's nice to have, you know, lots of beautiful girls that have beautiful girlfriends in the, you know, within your social network, either directly or one step or two steps removed. Well, now that you've got some experience with a social network, what would you, how would you suggest a guy who d didn't have that to create a social network for himself? The, I mean, you, you don't need to start with influential, powerful people and, you know, models and photographers and model agency bosses and bookers and whatever else. You can start just with, you know, cool people, people that you'd like to talk to, um, people that make you feel good, guys that would be good wingmen, whatever it is. And for me, it all changed when I think there were a few years when I was going out and, you know, you put me in a bar and my um, potential, you know, dates or whatever all depend on whoever's in that room that night. So, you know, there's a girl there, she's kind of pretty, okay, you know, I'm going to try and get her, see what happens. Um, and that's it. And then I really changed my, my whole philosophy and I started going out and thinking, uh, that's a cool guy, <laughs> you know, he's good with girls, we could hang out. That girl seems really nice and sociable and, you know, bubbly and this kind of girl that all girls like, you know, that kind of non-bitchy girl that girls like, she would be good. Um, this girl's very pretty, but she's got a boyfriend. Instead of running off, you know, say, oh, okay, that's cool, you know, keep in touch. And a lot of girls that um, ended up with me were actually girls that, you know, had a boyfriend when I met them, and then they broke up in a few months. And, you know, who's, who's waiting uh, ready, you know? So they were just around, and I thought, yeah, she's pretty, but chances are she's going to be single in a few months. So, you know, she wouldn't cheat on her boyfriend because she's a good, good girl. But, you know, we just had a nice conversation. We've got stuff in common, so we can add each other on Facebook, follow Instagram, whatever, and just keep in touch. Hey, how are you doing? Um, maybe, you know, meet at some event or whatever every every month or two, and then the time when she's single is, is time to, to strike. But the idea being don't limit yourself to the girls that are single, that respond positively, that are ready for you that night, that would give you their number that day. Um, in uh, you know in purely romantic context think about anyone you could get who could be a friend a connection um, a wingman a wing girl someone that you want to spend time with someone that might you know have friends that you would want to date whatever it is and often you shoot yourself in the foot if you meet you know a bunch of pretty girls and you just try and get one and then you either win or fail but after that it's just you know it's finished instead of trying to get into their, you know, getting to know them, make friends with them. And it's, uh, it seems, you know, like a longer game. You don't get that instant gratification. It's like that psychology test with the kids with the marshmallows, you know, where if they, they can eat one immediately or if they wait 10 minutes, they get a whole packet or whatever it is. And it's, it's kind of that approach that, um, that I started taking and then once you've got that great social network, you really don't have to do very much because there are always going to be um, pretty girls around. There's always going to be options for, uh, you know, cool stuff to do just because of the people, you know, and, you know, they're inviting you to things, they're giving you access to things, and they're saying, oh, there's this girl, you know, you're going to like her. You just have to treat everyone well, and you have to treat the women with respect and, and be honest. Um, a lot of the girls I hooked up with, they saw me, you know, in the bars and clubs, they saw me hitting on girls, they knew I slept with girls. Um, it didn't put them off and also it meant that when we got together, they didn't really have any expectations because they'd seen, you know, my life and they just, they wanted, you know, they wanted me, that maybe they, they would have liked more but they, you know, they didn't hear any lies and they didn't have any um, expectations. Well, you've had uh, girlfriends, uh, I know, in the past. Uh, I gather that uh, some of these women stand out over the others, and that's why you get more involved with them. But um, it's, um, 
it's uh, you know when you've got this large social circle, uh, you know how do you do you do you end up dating you end up dating uh, several from the same group. It sounds like, and uh, I guess just by being honest, that's what uh, allows they don't they don't have any problem with that. Typically, I would expect. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're honest, of course, yeah, it's fine. But if you imagine there are five girls that are friends, and you make friends with them, and then they and then that's your social circle. That's a, that's one way to do it, but it's weaker when you are the hub, or your very close friend is the hub, or you know, when is the, when the hub is closer to you, then the girls are more likely to change and rotate and not know each other so well. So they come out, you know, when you invite them. But um, typically, what I would have done would be um, meet the you know, there's the girl in the social group. We've never had one on one time. And then I arrange one on one time with her, and then she doesn't come back to the group. Like after she's just seeing me alone, and then I see the group kind of separately from her. And then maybe some people in the group meet her for coffee or whatever. But yeah, the reputation is important. I don't, um, I don't have a bad reputation with women, so um, it works well when when things don't work out. I mean, that's a whole other subject, which is. Um, why things don't work out, and it just happens that they fizzle out. They fizzle out because I don't um, work as hard to be entertaining and fun. They don't like me as much. I maybe do some things that are unattractive, not rude, offensive, or bad to her, but you know, just not manly or, or whatever it might be that cause her to lose, you know, some of her attraction. Then just fizzles out. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Well, today uh, it sounds to me like you've uh, got that uh, approach more like, you know, the old story about the 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 uh, father bull and the uh, young bull at the top of the mountain looking down at the sheep, at the whole herd of sheep, and um, the son is like all raring to go, and he goes, uh, uh, you know, let's let's run down there and and have the uh, have our way with one of the sheeps and the father says well why don't why don't we just walk down there slowly and have our way with all of them you know that sounds more like your approach uh, and i guess what i'm what i'm gathering is that you you know i think most people find a uh, a method that works for example some people might go online and find that that uh, provides them with a you know an ongoing supply and they don't need to go to the clubs anymore uh, sure. you know and not uh, very I don't recommend the online approach. I know that it's super popular these days, but especially with Tinder. But well, tell tell me why. What's your thoughts on online dating then? The most beautiful girls are not on Tinder. They wouldn't use it. They don't need to. They've got guys, you know, picking them up in Lamborghinis. Why they need to be exposed to the, you know, the the average bums, you know, that are, that are going to be on Tinder. Why do they have to scroll through? All that trash, and why would I want to do that? You know, even if I go to a city with very beautiful girls, I'm not going to find any on Tinder. Is that they match my requirements for anything more than probably not even for casual sex? You know, the, just the quality isn't there. So guys should aim higher, and they shouldn't put that in the way of having real interactions and um, meeting girls in the real world. Okay. Um, well, what I was getting to though was that um, you know you, it sounds like you've found your uh, source of supply being you know more through the social circle than anything else. And I guess I was curious how today you might uh, do a uh, you know if you went out to a club today, how what you would do? Or would you just go with your with your crowd, and then I guess they would attract you know whoever else might be there that um, would probably end up coming into your crowd. Uh, as opposed to you know doing a cold approach like uh, like other people might do these days. I mean that's the easiest way, um, and it is the way that that happens most of the time. But sometimes you can't always do that. I've I've had lots of you know crazy situations. I will send a girl to get another girl, or you know do do things like this. Um, I've got um, a girl here now my girlfriend and I did meet her from a cold approach in in a bar and that was you know that was kind of the the standard the standard thing so it, of course it happens from time to time that 
there's someone you just see and you know you want to talk to them what what would you do differently today when in terms of a let's say a cold approach compared to maybe the early years when you were learning this stuff i think in the early years i'm in a Aside from shitting myself you know, <laughs> and ter being terrified, I think that um, in the early days I would work a lot. So I would think, okay, I need to make her interested. I need to be high energy. I need to make sure I say this, this, and this because she will like that. Then I need to. So it would there would just be loads going on, and I would be working. So she could kind of sit back and just watch as I put on my you know demonstration. Um, and then she could, you know, decide if she likes me and it would be from my position, you know, like, please give me your number, you know, this, not that I'm saying that, but I'm thinking, oh God, I hope I get her. So, you know, that, that kind of, um, that kind of situation. And then now it would be like, Hey, what's up? And then she's, she's either into me or not. She's not into, really, you're not into me. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of mindset. Well, that's strange. Must be something wrong with you. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with you because you, and make them laugh or, you know, kind of going with the flow and doing only what is necessary. Oh. Go, go to talk to her and she's friendly. Okay, you don't need to do anything. Go to talk to her and she's a little bit testy. Okay, you tease her and then that's dead. Go and talk to her and she's like, I don't want to fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. And you're, you know, you say, I love that. I love it when, you know, when a girl's honest. Most girls think they have to be polite and talk to someone. I'm very rude too. I'm, I'm maybe the rudest guy here. We're perfect for each other. Something like that. And she laughs, you know. So it's, it can't be, it can't be, it can't be planned and it isn't planned. And I think that I've exercised that muscle in, you know, in my brain that is, kind of spontaneous and, and can come up with the right thing for the right situation. But if you approach a girl and you catch her in the right mood and you're polite and there's nothing offensive and you have good body language, you're dressed well, you hold good eye contact, why wouldn't she want to talk to you? You know, and you're not saying, uh, I like you, I want to sleep with you now. You're just having a, a conversation. And then, you know, so you don't have to do anything extraordinary. So I only do just what is necessary. And I think in the early days, I would give 100% even, you know, when it wasn't necessary and just expend a lot of energy trying trying to to get her because it was coming from the position of me not being good enough and her being so amazing. And now it's like the opposite <laughs> mentally in my mind. Uh, was there a um, turning point where that shifted and was there anything that you might suggest someone to do or to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, sure. I mean, I wouldn't say there was one second where I said, okay, now, now that's changed. I think a lot of things change it. So the first being that when you're exposed to beautiful women, you understand that they have insecurities and problems and whatever, and they're not, they're not that goddess that you imagine them to be. Um, you see this beautiful girl, you go on a date with her and you see that she's actually quite vapid and you know boring she doesn't have anything else and you realize that when she's uh, 30 whatever that she's gonna have you know very little to to offer guys and you know you want more than that and then you know you date the girl that is just super beautiful and then when you meet these other girls you're like okay whatever you know it doesn't bother you anymore so um there's kinds of desensitization to beauty the understanding that you can take the girl that you just think is incredible, go inside her brain and you see that she's, you know, insecure, she's got her problems, she's got things she worries about, she's human basically. And so you don't treat her like a goddess. And from having, you know, friend being friends with those girls, dating those girls, over time you get that understanding and so everyone becomes attainable. You know, there's no one that is you know so so special because they're not they're humans you know we know that celebrities you know commit suicide do drugs have all kinds of problems um it is maybe the wrong thing to you know to it's definitely the wrong thing to approach a girl who looks 
fantastic and expect her to be fantastic and to approach with that you know air of wow i'm so honored to to be able to talk to you i can't believe i'm i've met someone so amazing because she knows she isn't you know so to be casual to tease her to be comfortable escalating to not um, be a lot of guys when they meet a, a girl they really like then they they're terrified to escalate they want to be special with her so not try to sleep with her on the first night or not try and fit push things too far you know all of the things they've done with those average girls and they want to completely change it with this one and do you think that's a good strategy or is it really more an individual situation to be decided on the fly pretty much we definitely shouldn't treat beautiful girls any differently um, you know, if you would go up to, uh, you know, a slightly attractive girl and say, yo, what's up? Then you should go to the hottest girl and say, yo, what's up? And the, the casualness and the fact that you're not treating her with reverence will, will help you. Okay. Um, well, uh, what, a, tell me about, uh, you know, Today, when you when you go out, what's what's an, an average evening like with with your social circle typically like now that you have a girlfriend in particular? Well, it's I mean, as I said, I've, I've I'm older now and don't do so much. Um, if we if we go to you know a bar or a club, it would be five or six of us, maybe a guy, maybe another guy, maybe not. Um, you know, talk amongst ourselves, meet other people in the place, and then go home. But it's it's more. Um, I mean, the night would look like any any other night, except that my company is very good in terms of you know we've got the the best looking girls around us. So much so that many times guys have sent champagne over so that they can you know try and worm their way in to meet the girls that are with me um, so that the night out just looks like you know me with a bunch of girls um, but how to get to that you know that's that's the thing that um, that requires the work you know that that's kind of the the result so how it would look is nothing special but to get there um, it's about, you know, resisting that urge to try and, you know, kind of pick up every girl that you meet and to focus on having, you know, just a lot of good people around you, giving them a fun time, looking after them, making them feel safe and giving them, you know, opportunities that, that help them. I, I connect people as well. You know, I had a girl that, um, really wanted to cook to bake cakes or something and then I had a friend as a chef so I introduced them and then she worked in the kitchen and she loved it and she was making the cakes and she did it for two weeks and then she left and you know I've got friends who's a photographer and then I had another girl who needed um, big photo shoot for a magazine and I said okay you know connect those and so he got money and she got the pictures and um, it's is something that you start small, but by incrementally adding, you end up, you know, as high as you can take it. Okay, tell me a little bit about uh, your the business uh, part of uh, of uh, PUA training, and uh, I guess the fast seduction site, and uh, maybe tell me a little bit more about what what you've been involved with, and um, how how is that is that in general. Um, something that you found found also helps a lot of guys for just because of the way that you're able to reach them um, the business the business is is quite interesting um, I, I wrote the book and that sold hundred thousand copies now all over the world is quite big in you know places like Brazil where I wouldn't have expected it and the business um, I think something that that pick up helped me with was kind of reading people and finding talent so um, all of the important people at the company on the business side they've been there I don't know an average of eight years and we were founded ten years ago so a lot a lot of people there's very low turnover in in the staff um, 
the fast seduction site, that was one of my biggest failures in business because we took that on and it was actually um, built on a very old platform and we just didn't have the IT skills to um, to keep it going and so it, it failed. So we currently we just redirected it to our site and there's there's nothing there. So that, that was a fail. On the other hand, um, we've got the forum, it's the Pickup Artist Forum and that was a, a nice success that, you know, that was, um, uh, it's been a, a popular Pickup Artist Forum for, you know, 10 years since, since I bought it. Which one is that one? Maybe uh, you can give us the the, um, the link. Or tell me what the link is. Mpuaforum.com. Oh, that's that's a big that's a big forum. That's right. Yeah, and it redirects to pick dash up dash artist dash forum dot com. Okay. Um, uh, you are you you're still doing uh, like uh, live coaching, as far as I know. Not not necessarily so oh. much yourself, but uh, no. nobody. You don't have uh, instructors doing that. No, we actually stopped all, all of the life coaching. We used to have um, Adam Lyons in the States, as you mentioned, and we had a training team in the UK. And we just noticed that it was taking a lot of focus of the business. But, I mean, to all the guys that, you know, they come to a boot camp and they say, oh, look, there's six guys and they pay this much, so they must be making that much profit. It's actually, you know, quite a low margin business because unlike an NLP seminar or something where you've got one guy and, you know, an unlimited um, audience and, and no real costs apart from the room hire. Uh, we had to have trainers, you know, on who were depending on us to to find clients for them to have work. We had to have the student to instructor ratio. And so it, it turned out that the business was uh, quite seasonal and, you know, just, just a, a bit of a pain in the neck. And, um, so the business decision was to to shut it down in the US and in the UK and we could occasionally do live events now but um, we focus just on the products we've got a lot of very good products and um, we sell those so that's that's the business these days okay well tell, tell us about uh, I guess one of your most popular products maybe we can have some of our uh, our uh, listeners uh, find out about it and hopefully uh, perhaps uh, uh, buy some of them and you know we'll see what uh, see what benefits they can learn from you in addition to this i think the the most famous product is stealth attraction um it's basically my system for picking up girls in the nightclubs and bars the you know marketing hook of it is that it's rejection free and actually it's it's pretty close to living up to that meaning that um, you know, you're not putting yourself on the line. You're not putting yourself in in any situation where you can be rejected overtly at any stage of the pickup. So guys really love it, and that's that's kind of our main products. And then we've got products that address each you know particular area, like day game, in a game, whatever it would be. Okay. Well, I think uh, that's um, on that note. I'm going to, uh, uh, I guess. Uh, uh, end the uh, the webinar here. I want to thank you for your time. I do thank want to you. mention I do want to mention that if somebody uh, uh, I guess if somebody wanted to uh, find out about your products, I guess they would go to poatraining.com. Sure, yeah. And uh, so if you were to do that and um, and you order something uh, from Richard and his company, if you uh, at the same time send an email to him and to myself uh, that you did that because you found out about it from uh, this webinar or somewhere else that we talk about PUA training on uh, on cliffslist.com. Uh, if you let me know about that, I will send you in addition a free bonus Cliffslist product uh, just as a thank you for having uh, uh, watched this and uh, and learning about Richard from us. Nice so, so Richard, I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, appreciate all the insights you've shared with us. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again soon. Thank you. That's great. All right. Take care.